Let's talk about osteomyelitis. The term osteo means bone, while myel comes from the Greek word mylos, which means bone marrow, and the suffix itis indicates inflammation. Together, osteomyelitis refers to the inflammatory condition of bone and bone marrow extending to the periosteum of the bone, typically due to an infection. The pathogens that trigger this inflammatory reaction are mainly bacteria causing pain, swelling, and potential damage to bone tissue. Osteomyelitis primarily affects the mandible, with cases in the maxilla accounting for only 1-6% to of all occurrences. To better understand osteomyelitis, it's very crucial to first look at the basic structure of the bone. Just like all other bones, when examining a cross-section of the mandible, the mandible comprises outer layers of compact bone that encase the inner trabecular cancellous or spongy bone. Well, all three names refer to the same tissue. The outer layers of compact bone are lined by periosteum on the outer surface, shown in green hair. Both the compact and trabecular or cancellous bones are interconnected by a complex vascular network. Upon a much closer look of the spongy and the compact bone together, we can see here that the larger blood vessels lie within the spongy bone, which then branches off into smaller vessels that penetrate the compact bone. These small vessels reach the haversian systems within the compact bone. The haversian systems, also known as osteons, are the fundamental structural units of the compact bones. Each haversian system contains a central haversian canal, which houses an artery at its center. Smaller branches from this central artery extend into the Volkmann's canals. These Volkmann's canal connect different haversian systems within the compact bone, linking them to both the bone's inner marrow space and the outer periosteum. Understanding this complex vascular network is vital for grasping how an infection can spread from spongy bone to the compact bone and then to the periosteum of the bone. Looking at the causes of osteomyelitis, most cases of osteomyelitis in the jaw are caused by bacterial infections, primarily from untreated dental or periodontal abscesses. Other causes include trauma causing fractures, hematogenous spread, and infections from nearby areas like the sinuses or throat. Conditions such as a weakened immune system and chronic diseases like diabetes and malnutrition can increase the risk. Due to its infectious nature and symptoms, some experts prefer terms like separative osteomyelitis, bacterial osteomyelitis, or secondary osteomyelitis. All refers to the same condition. The pathophysiology of osteomyelitis can be recognized by the clinical triad of bony destruction, the buildup of pus known as separation, and the development of sequestra or necrotic bone tissue. Let's look at the key steps in the pathophysiology of osteomyelitis. The infection usually starts from bacterial invasion into the bone, mostly from dental abscesses or trauma, triggering an inflammatory response in the bone. The inflammation increases blood vessel permeability, accumulating plasma fluid and pus in the bone. White blood cells are attracted to the infection site, releasing enzymes that cause tissue damage and necrosis. As the infection continues to grow, blood clots form in blood vessels, causing ischemia, which worsens the infection. The pus keeps accumulating because of the infection, and it increases in turn pressure within the bone, causing vascular collapse and further tissue damage, resulting from tissue necrosis as the blood supply is compromised. The pus accumulation may compress nearby nerves leading to numbness, tingling or paresthesia of the jaw. As the infection further spreads throughout the bone, it keeps disrupting the blood flow and causes widespread bone destruction. In severe cases of osteomyelitis, the infection can cause perforation of the bone with pus accumulating beneath the mucosa. Also, in chronic cases, a fistula may form as pus drains through a channel created by the infection. I hope this video helps. In the next part of this video, we'll talk about the types of osteomyelitis, which are the acute and chronic separative osteomyelitis, the clinical and radiographic features of both of them, followed by histopathologic features, and then lastly, we'll talk about the treatment. 
So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, like the video and in case you got any questions or suggestions, you may write them down in the comment section below. Have a nice day and thank you for watching.